Hello, everyone. My name is Dr. David K. Ewan, and I'm from the United States. I'm originally from the city of Boston. I'm the CEO and also the founder of Enterprise College. And after 35 years, I'm now defending my honorary doctorate in education. So get ready to be inspired by the groundbreaking presentation titled Achieving Models of Excellence. This is a result of my thesis project, which earned me an honorary doctorate in education from the prestigious TOCA Consortium of Global BPOs in EdTech. After devoting 35 years in the field of education and working across the globe, I am beyond grateful to share this framework with fellow educators and learners. This presentation is not just a culmination of my life's work, but a revolutionary guide to help you achieve excellence in every aspect of your academic and professional journey. To be recognized with an honorary doctorate is truly an honor that humbles me to the core. Join me in celebrating this achievement and let's strive for excellence together. So let me first break down the element of the models of excellence. So M-O-D-E-L-S, when we're talking about the models of excellence, well, that's an acronym, M-O-D-E-L-S for models is an acronym that represents M for motivation, O for organization, D for discipline, E for ethics, L for lifelong learning, and S, the strength to not give up. So again, the letter M stands for motivation, the letter O stands for organization. The letter D stands for discipline. The letter E is for ethics. The L is for lifelong learning. And the S is for the strength to not give up. So I will go to it in greater detail. So let me give a little bit more example before I dive deeper into the acronym. So Models of Excellence, it's an acronym that represents a set of traits and habits that are essential for achieving excellence in any field. So the M, which is the motivation to get up and go, this refers to having a strong drive and enthusiasm to take action towards goals. It means not just waiting for things to happen, but actively seeking out opportunities and taking the initiative to make things happen. The letter O, which is the organization for strategy, this means having a plan and a clear roadmap to achieve goals. It involves setting priorities, breaking down complex tasks into smaller manageable ones, and being able to adapt to changing circumstances. The letter D is discipline with focus. This refers to the ability to stay focused and committed to goals, even in the face of distraction and setbacks. It means having the self-discipline to stick to plans and maintaining the necessary habits and routines to achieve objectives. The letter E, that's ethics that are both legal and moral. This means having a strong sense of ethics and values that guide behavior and decision-making. It involves following the laws and regulations of profession or industry, but also going beyond to uphold moral principles such as honesty, integrity, and respect for others. The L, which stands for lifelong learning, this refers to the mindset of continuous improvement and the willingness to learn and grow throughout life. It involves seeking out new knowledge, skills, and experiences and being open to feedback and constructive criticism. And the S, which is the strength to not give up, this means having the resilience and perseverance to overcome obstacles and setbacks and to keep pushing towards goals even when the going gets tough. It involves having a positive mindset and the ability to bounce back from failure and setbacks. Overall, the Models of Excellence acronym highlights the importance of having a combination of personal qualities, habits, attitudes that are necessary for achieving excellence in any field. So let's understand more of the Models of Excellence. To achieve excellence in any aspect of your life, one must embody the models of excellence. The acronym MODELS stands for motivation to get up and go, organization for strategy, discipline with focus, ethics that are both legal and moral, lifelong learning, and the strength to not give up. 
Each of these elements is essential for anyone who wants to achieve their goals and reach their full potential. Motivation to get up and go is the first step towards achieving excellence. Without motivation, one will struggle to find energy and drive necessary to pursue their goals. Motivation can come from many sources, including personal passion, external rewards, or a sense of purpose. Whatever the source, it is essential to maintain a high level of motivation to keep moving forward. Organization for strategy is the next key component. A well-organized plan is critical to achieving success. Without a plan, one will struggle to stay focused and will be more likely to become overwhelmed by the challenges they face. Organizing strategies can include breaking down goals into smaller, more manageable steps, prioritizing tasks, and creating a timeline for completion. Discipline with focus is also crucial. Maintaining discipline requires focus and self-control. It means staying committed to one's goals and avoiding distractions that can lead to procrastination or lack of progress. Discipline is a learned behavior that requires practice and dedication, but it is essential for achieving excellence. Ethics that are both legal and moral are also necessary for success. Ethical behavior is essential for building trust and developing positive relationships with others. It means adhering to legal and moral standards and treating others with respect and fairness. Ethics are not only essential for personal growth, but they are also critical for building successful teams and organization. Lifelong learning is another key element in achieving excellence. Learning is a continuous process that never ends, and it is essential for personal and professional growth. It requires an open mind and a willingness to explore new ideas and perspectives. Lifelong learning also helps to keep one's skills and knowledge up to date and relevant. Finally, the strength to not give up is crucial. Achieving excellence requires perseverance, resilience, and the ability to overcome obstacles. It means having the mental and emotional fortitude to keep going even when things get tough. Without the strength to not give up, one may give up on their dreams and fail to achieve their full potential. In conclusion, the models of excellence provide a roadmap for achieving success in any area of life. Motivation to get up and go, organization for strategy, discipline with focus, ethics that are both legal and moral, lifelong learning, and the strength to not give up are all essential components of achieving excellence. By embodying these elements, one can overcome challenges, reach their full potential, and achieve goals. Now let's talk about global education. My next topic is about global education as it relates to achieving the models of excellence. Global education is a crucial aspect of learning in today's interconnected world. It is an approach to education that focuses on the interconnectedness of different cultures, economy, I should say economies and environments around the world. The models of excellence can be particularly useful in the context of global education as they provide a framework for students to develop the skills and qualities necessary to navigate the challenges and opportunities of an increasingly globalized world. Motivation is the first element of the models framework and it is particularly important in the context of global education. Students who are motivated to learn about different cultures and perspectives are more likely to be successful in their studies and in their future careers. They are also more likely to be interested in pursuing lifelong learning opportunities, which is another key element of the models framework. Organization is another important element of the models framework, and it is particularly relevant to the context of global education. Students who are organized are better equipped to manage and the complexities of studying and working in the globalized world. They are able to prioritize their tasks effectively, manage their time efficiently, and collaborate effectively with others from different cultural backgrounds. Discipline and focus are also critical elements of the model's framework as they help students stay on track and achieve their goals. In the context of global education, discipline and focus are particularly important because students must be able to navigate a complex and rapidly changing environment. 
They must be able to adapt to new situations, learn new skills, and work with people from different cultural backgrounds. Ethics is another key element of the models framework, and they are important in the context of global education. Students who have a strong ethical foundation are better equipped to navigate the complex ethical issues that arise in a globalized world. They are able to make decisions that are both legal and moral, and they are able to navigate cultural differences in a respectful and ethical way. Lifelong learning is another critical element of the models framework uh, and is essential for success in a rapidly changing world. Students who are committed to lifelong learning are able to adapt to new situations, learn new skills, and stay on top of the latest developments in their field. This is important in the context of global education where students must be able to adapt to new cultural contexts and stay up to date with the latest developments in their field. And finally, the strength to not give up is a key element of the model's framework that is relevant to the context of global education. Students who have the uh, strength to persevere through challenges and setbacks are more likely to be successful in their studies and in their future careers. They are also more likely to navigate the complex and rapidly changing environment of a globalized world. So overall, the models of excellence is highly relevant to the context of global education. They provide a framework for students to develop the skills and qualities necessary to succeed in a rapidly changing and interconnected world by focusing on motivation, organization, discipline, and focus, uh, and also ethics, lifelong learning, and the strength to not give up students can develop the skills and qualities necessary to thrive in a globalized world. Now we talked before about, and I'll do sort of a quick refresher about motivation, organization, discipline, ethics, lifelong learning, and the strengths to not give up. That's the acronym for M-O-D-E-L-S, for models. And we're talking about achieving the models of excellence. So let's talk more about motivation. Motivation is a complex and multifaceted concept that could be that could take many forms. So here are some examples of different types of motivation that could be relevant to the models of excellence framework. First of all, there's intrinsic motivation. This refers to the internal drive to do something because it is personally rewarding or enjoyable. For example, someone might be motivated to study hard for an exam because they find the material fascinating or enjoy the challenges of learning new things. The next one, extrinsic, extrinsic uh, motivation. This refers to the a drive to do something in order to receive external rewards or avoid negative consequences. For example, someone might be motivated to work hard at their job because they want to earn a promotion or avoid getting fired. Uh, the next one, achievement motivation. This refers to the drive to set and accomplish goals Someone who is highly motivated by achievement might set ambitious goals for themselves and work hard to accomplish them, even if there are no external rewards involved. Uh, the next one is social motivation. This refers to the drive to connect with others and be part of a group. For example, someone might be motivated to join a sports team or volunteer organization because they enjoy the camaraderie and the sense of belonging. Uh, the next one is power motivation. This refers to the drive to have influence or control over others. Someone who is highly motivated by power might seek leadership roles or positions of authority in order to exert their influence. Next, I will talk about the letter O for models, uh, O for organization. Organi organizing strategy is an important component of the models of excellence framework. Here are some examples of organizational skills that can help you achieve this goal. The first one, and maybe even the most obvious, is time management. Good time management skills can help you organize your schedule and prioritize your tasks effectively. This might involve using a planner or digital calendar to keep track of deadlines and appointments, breaking down larger projects into smaller tasks, and setting aside specific blocks of time for focused work. Goal setting. Setting clear goals is essential for organizing your efforts towards a specific outcome. This might involve identifying both short-term and long-term goals, breaking them down into smaller steps, 
and regularly assessing progress towards achieving them. The next one is delegation. Learning how to delegate uh, tasks effectively can help you maximize your productivity and focus on the important tasks. This might involve identifying tasks that could be delegated to others, communicating expectations clearly, and providing support and feedback to those you are delegating to. Uh, the next one, prioritization. Prioritizing tasks based on their importance and urgency can help you stay focused and make the most of your time. This might involve creating a list of tasks and ranking them in order of importance or using a system like Eisenhower matrix to prioritize tasks based on their <coughs> uh, level of urgency and importance. Import, I should say information management with so much information available in today's digital age, organizing your information and resources is more important than ever. This might involve using tools like cloud-based storage and collaboration software to share information with others, setting up systems for managing email and other communications, and staying up to date with the latest technology and trends. Next, we'll talk about D for discipline. And this is part of the M-O-D-E-L-S, models for the models of excellence. D is for discipline. Uh, discipline is an essential part of the models of excellence framework. Here are some good examples of discipline that can help you achieve goals. The first one is consistency. One of the most important aspects of discipline is being consistent in your efforts. This might involve establishing a regular routine or scheduling or schedule for co completing tasks and sticking to it even when it feels difficult or challenging. Self-control. Developing self-control can help you resist temptation and stay focused on your goals. This might involve setting limits on your use of technology or social media or avoiding distractions that could interfere with your productivity. The next one is persistence. Persistence is key to achieving long-term success. This might involve setting realistic goals and working towards them steadily. And even when progress is slow or setbacks occur. The next one is accountability. Holding yourself accountable for your actions and decisions is an important part of discipline. This might involve regularly assessing your progress towards your goals and seeking uh, feedback from others and taking responsibility for any mistakes or failures along the way. Uh, the next one, time management. Effective time management is crucial for maintaining discipline and staying focused on your goals. This might involve prioritizing tasks uh, setting realistic deadlines, and avoiding procrastination. Next, we're going to talk about the letter E for the M-O-D-E-L-S. E is ethics uh, that is related to legally and morally focused on ethics. So ethics that are both legal and moral sound, are legally and morally sound, I should say, are an essential component of the Models of Excellence framework. Here are some good examples of ethical behavior. Remember that letter E stands for ethics, legally and morally, in the Models of Excellence Framework. That's the acronym M-O-D-E-L-S. Uh, honesty. Honesty is the first one. Being honest in all of your interactions with others is an important part of ethical behavior. This might involve telling the truth even when it is difficult or uncomfortable and being transparent about your actions and intentions. The next one is respect. Treating others with respect and dignity is an important part of ethical behavior. This might involve listening to others with an open mind, valuing their opinions and uh, perspectives and avoiding discriminatory or disrespectful, disrespectful language or behavior. Uh, the next one, responsibility. Taking responsibility for your actions and decisions is an important part of ethical behavior. This might involve admitting when you have made a mistake, making amends when possible, and taking steps to prevent the same mistake from happening in the future. The next one is fairness. Treating others fairly and equitably is an essential part of ethical behavior. This might involve avoiding favoritism or bias, ensuring that everyone has an equal opportunity 
to succeed and recognizing and addressing any disparities or inequalities that exist. And next, uh, compliance. Following all applicable laws and regulations and ethical guidelines is an essential part of ethical behavior. This might involve familiarizing yourself with relevant laws and regulations, seeking advice or guidance when necessary and avoiding any behavior that could be construed as illegal or unethical. Uh, the next one in, is the letter L. Uh, we're talking about the Models of Excellence framework, the M-O-D-E-L-S acronym. So it's the letter L for lifelong learning. Uh, lifelong learning is an essential component of the Models of Excellence framework. <clears throat> Pardon me. Here are some good examples of lifelong learning. Uh, so the first one is continuous education. Engaging in continuous education is an important part of lifelong learning. This might involve taking courses, attending conferences or workshops, or pursuing advanced degrees or certifications in your field. The next one is reading. Reading regularly can help you expand your knowledge and stay up to date on the latest developments in your field. This might involve reading books, articles, or other publications related to your work or interests. The next one is seeking feedback. Seeking feedback from others can help you identify areas where you can improve and learn. This might involve asking uh, for feedback from colleagues, mentors, or superiors, or supervisors, uh, or participating in peer review processes. The next one is embracing challenges. Embracing challenges and seeking out new experiences can help you learn and grow. This might involve taking on new responsibilities, working on complex projects, or seeking out opportunities to collaborate with others. And finally, reflecting on experiences. Reflecting on your experience can help you learn from them and identify areas where you can improve. This might involve keeping a journal, participating in group discussions, or seeking out opportunities for self-reflection and introspection. And the last letter in the Models of Excellence, M-O-D-E-L-S, we're talking about the acronym. It's the Models of Excellence Framework that is part of this doctoral thesis. The S stands for the strength to not give up. The strength to not give up is an essential component of the Models of Excellence framework. Here are some good examples of the strength to not give up. One is perseverance. Perseverance is the ability to keep going even when faced with obstacles and setbacks. This might involve working through challenging tasks, overcoming self-doubt or negative feedback or pushing through difficult times. The next one, resilience. Resilience is the ability to bounce back from adversity and continue moving forward. This might involve recovering from a failure, coping with stress or trauma, or adapting to changing circumstances. Uh, the next one, persistence. Persistence is the ability to maintain a steady and consistent effort towards a goal, even in the face of distraction or setbacks. This might involve setting clear objectives, developing a plan to achieve them, and staying focused on the task at hand. Determination. Determination is the ability to maintain a strong sense of purpose and commitment, even when faced with the challenges or obstacles. This might involve setting clear goals, developing a plan to achieve them, and staying motivated and focused on the outcome. And the next one, self-discipline. Self-discipline is the ability to control your impulses and stay focused on your goals, even when they are faced with distractions or temptations. This might involve developing good habits, avoiding procrastination, and staying organized and on task. So those are the models of excellence. Now, we sometimes call them the seven pillars of the models of excellence because the M-O-D-E-L-S has six letters, but the seventh letter could be the combination of two letters. For example, motivation and discipline might go together. Um, another one is organization and the strength to not give up might go together. 
but it's not fixed. It can be anything. So right now we're talking about achieving the models of excellence, which uses the letters M-O-D-E-L-S in the acronym, where M is motivation, O is organization, D is discipline, E is ethics, L is lifelong learning, and S is the strength to not give up. And if you wanted to add a seventh one, you could add two of the letters together, like M and D for motivation and discipline. It makes sense that those two go together. Okay, now we're going to talk about what achieving excellence is all about because we're talking about the models of excellence. So the models of excellence framework is designed to help individuals develop the skills and qualities they need to achieve excellence in their personal and professional lives. Here are some examples of how this framework can help make a person better in achieving excellence. Number one, improving focus. By developing discipline with focus, individuals can improve their ability to stay on task and achieve their goals. This can help them make progress toward their objectives and stay motivated and engaged in their work. Uh, number two, enhance it, enhanced learning. By embracing lifelong learning, individuals can continue to develop their skills and knowledge, stay up to date with the latest trends and innovations in their field and become more effective and successful in their work. Number three, increased motivation. By developing motivation to get up and go, individuals can become more proactive and driven in their approach to work and life. This can help them achieve their goals more quickly and efficiently and feel more satisfied and fulfilled in their personal and professional lives. The next one, better decision making. By adhering to ethics that are both legal and moral, individuals can make better decisions that align with their values and principles. This can help them build trust and credibility with others and make a positive impact in their communities and organizations. Uh, and now the next one, which is greater resilience. By developing the strength to not give up, individuals can overcome obstacles and setbacks, bounce back from adversity, and continue moving forward toward their goals. This can help them build resilience and develop a strong sense of purpose and commitment even in challenging circumstances. And next, by embodying the qualities and skills outlined in the Models of Excellence Framework, individuals can become better leaders, team members, and con uh, contributors in their personal and professional lives and achieve greater sense of excellence and fulfillment. Now we're going to talk about the world we live in. And in the world we live in, we really do need the Models of Excellence. Why? Because it's a game of surviving change. So that's what we're going to talk about next, surviving change. Living in a world that's constantly evolving can be daunting and overwhelming. However, it's possible to survive and thrive in such an environment with the models of excellence. The acronym MODELS stands for Motivation, Organization, Discipline, Ethics, Lifelong Learning, and Strength, meaning the strength to not give up. Each of these facets plays an important role in adapting to an ever-changing world. Motivation is the key to success in any endeavor. Without motivation, it's easy to give up and succumb to the challenges of the world. Therefore, it's important to find ways to stay motivated. This can be achieved by setting goals, surrounding oneself with positivity, and finding purpose in what one does. Uh, organization is also crucial in surviving an ever-changing world. With so many changes happening all the time, it's easy to get lost in the chaos. Having a strategy in place can help one stay focused and on track. This can be achieved by creating a plan, prioritizing tasks, and delegating responsibilities. The next one, discipline, is another important factor to consider. In order to achieve success, one must be disciplined with their time and resources. This can be achieved by setting boundaries, creating a routine, and avoiding distractions. Ethics are also important to consider when navigating through an ever-changing world. It's essential to have a set of values that are both legal and moral. This can be achieved by being honest, transparent, and treating others with respect. Lifelong learning is also crucial in adapting to an ever-changing world. With new technologies and advancements happening all the time, 
it's important to continuously learn and grow. This can be achieved by taking courses, reading books, and attending workshops. And finally, the strength to not give up is necessary when all things get tough. Think about that. Strength is necessary to not give up when things get tough. This can be achieved by having a support system, practicing self-care, and being resilient. So overall, the models of excellence are a comprehensive approach to surviving and thriving in an ever-changing world. By incorporating motivation, organization, discipline, ethics, lifelong learning, and strength, people can navigate through the challenges and come out on top. Um, this is a lot to do that we're talking about. Uh, we are talking about achieving the models of excellence. Uh, my thesis uh, for the honorary doctorate, uh, the Doctor of Education, has been submitted. It is now published. And as a published piece, it is certainly ready for peer review. Um, as a book publisher for 30 years, I was able to publish the thesis as a book. It's in hardcover, soft cover, which is paperback and also as ebook. It's on Amazon and certainly here on, um, in the US and around the world. Um, also on Barnes and Noble, which is a very major popular bookstore in the United States. Uh, the, the thesis, Achieving Models of Excellence, is available wherever books are sold. Um, anyone can ask for it at any bookstore in the United States and certainly find it online. So again, it's uh, Achieving Models of Excellence. And you can find the title with m.o.d.e.l.s. So it's Achieving Models of Excellence. Uh, in that form so that it's known that it's an acronym. Um, I am honored to have been um, selected as uh, a recipient of the honorary doctorate, uh, the doctor of education, as it relates to my profession. Um, I'm a, an education professional uh, for, well, since 1988, when I earned my master's degree in education at Cambridge College. So that is 35 years ago. Um, as part of that excitement, 35 years ago, Cambridge College has recently invited me to attend the graduation with uh, the alumni group. It's a small selected group that will be attending the graduation ceremony to support uh, the graduates on June 11th, 2023 in Boston. So I am excited to be there. Um, I thank you for listening and being attentive uh, for my defense of achieving the models of excellence. My name is Dr. David K. Ewan. Uh, I'm uh, originally from the city of Boston. Uh, I am uh, the CEO and founder of Enterprise College. Uh, we were first established as a book publishing company in 1994. Uh, Ten years later, in 2004, we became an award-winning academy. Uh, we toured the seven states of New York and New England at 52 locations uh, with uh, 18 different topics in digital multimedia technology um, and won some awards on that. Uh, starting in 2014, we continued uh, as an award-winning company, uh, very excited uh, to be an award-winning college that began in 2014 um, and starting uh, the remote access to online learning and being an open education resource as well uh, this is six years before the pandemic. So when the pandemic happened in 2020, we were ready. Um, I'm excited to what is planned for the future. As part of my postdoctoral work, I will be presenting information in the future about the design of Enterprise College as it relates to TOCA Global using the TOCA framework. 
which is technology, organization, client relations, and audit. Uh, we partner with BPOs, which is business process outsourcing. Um, so we use that model and that has brought us into uh, Asia, the Middle East, Europe, Russia, and Latin America. And more recently through the open, edu uh, the open university, I should say, the open university, we're entering into the UK. And uh, as we entered uh, the UK, that is where um, the TOCA Global Group has offered uh, the assignment of Doctor of Education. And I am humbly honored and I thank you. Um, I thank uh, all of you for listening. Um, I'm deeply humbled and I'm deeply honored. And uh, my hope is that I can do great things uh, in this new role uh, with this new degree and uh, the new position um, as a global education subject matter expert. Again, my name is Dr. David K. Ewan from Enterprise College. Thank you for listening.